I want to talk about another case that ripped America um, right at its core. Michael Brown, Ferguson, Missouri, 2014. Young African-American male is shot something like six times by um, Officer Darren Wilson. You were called to testify in that case as well. First and foremost, who reached out to you? And secondly, what were your findings there? Um, the attorneys for Michael Brown's family reached out to me. Um, he was about 18, 19 years, a young fellow. Young uh, man. Young man. And uh, yeah, Michael Brown uh, shot from the front uh, multiple times, and that uh, he wasn't a threat, that he didn't appear to be a threat to the officer. He was a distance away from the officer. Uh, the officer uh, wasn't threatened, uh, wasn't uh, uh, sufficiently threatened to, be, to have to kill, it, to shoot him. Uh, but, but that the, the, the what gathered most attention to that is after the shooting, uh, the way his body was left exposed in hot in a hot weather, uh, bleeding from the bullet wound to the head, and that um, uh, he um, um, uh, was kept in that and wouldn't let his mom go near him. His mother was at the uh, uh, trying to get to see th to his son to her son and the police were there wouldn't um, wouldn't um, uh, let her uh, go to the son who didn't cover up the body and that gained a lot of publicity but my opinion was uh, that um, he uh, he died of the multiple uh, gunshot wounds and that um, uh, he, there was evidence that he had his hand in the police car uh, at the time um, to show to show that uh, that part of the officer's testimony that he was threatening him in a police car uh, was uh, legitimate, but that uh, the uh, autopsy findings. Uh, were consistent with his being shot uh, while he was no longer a threat to the uh, officer. Got you. So, you know, because it, it, there's so much that have come out in that Michael Brown case. On one hand, we know the cop claimed that he was being attacked um, by Mr. Brown, which ultimately made him uh, fire. But witnesses said Michael Brown's hands were raised at the time of, um, of him being shot multiple times. And there was one gunshot wound in particular, if, I, if my memory serves me correct, which was to the top of the head, almost as right. though he was falling. Yes. Um, so you're saying that your findings shows that at the time of him being shot, he was at a distance from the officer. Yes, and, and, and what what I could say is that it was consistent with uh, witnesses who said that he was standing with his head down and not charging the officer. It was consistent with the officers, with the witnesses, but it doesn't exclude... It, it, it could also be consistent. I can't tell if he was in motion or not. The witnesses gotcha. said he had stopped, uh, and uh, the there was the one bullet wound at the top of the head that co would have caused him immediately to fall to the ground because it caused damage to the brain, uh, and and uh, would have made him. And in that, in the Michael Brown situation, um, uh, that. Uh, uh, Depending on that, that the witnesses uh, it were consistent with the witnesses uh, 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 said, uh, but couldn't rule out couldn't rule out that uh, uh, the um, uh, the officer felt threatened. 
Understood. Okay, I want to talk to you. In 2017, you also conducted a, a, an autopsy on former NFL player Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez was found guilty of uh, murdering Odin Lloyd. Um, he had another trial in which he was acquitted for two other murders. Right after his acquittal, he's found hung to death in his cell. It comes out that he has CTE. So when you did the autopsy and you had a chance to study his brain, do you think it was the CTE that caused him to commit suicide in a cell? That that's tough. What happened with with what, what happened with uh, Hernandez, who is this magnificent football player for uh, Boston, uh, Boston, New England? Yep, New England Patriots. Yeah. Uh, he he had been found di- uh, guilty of one murder. He was now charged with two other uh, two other murders. I got involved in it partially only because Jose Baez uh, uh, was hired for the second um, uh, uh, case. Uh, an attorney uh, that my wi- wife had worked with uh, uh, in uh, other cases. Uh, and my wife got involved in it, who was an attorney, Linda Kenny Baden. Uh, and they defended Hernandez in the second case. Now, the second case was the two murders. The jury knew, the jury knew uh, that um, um, Hernandez had already been uh, been uh, found guilty in the first in the first case with. Uh, so this scene, uh, now there was a second uh, case. Uh, it, it was amazing. And I was up uh, there a few times because my wife was uh, the attorney there with Jose Baez. And it was amazing that the the uh, defense lawyers for Hernandez uh, were able to get a not guilty verdict in the second, in, 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 the, in the second case. And Baez and my wife felt that the reason that uh, that an appeal, they had started an appeal in the first case, that the first uh, uh, decision uh, against him uh, uh, was wrong, and they had, were appealing the verdict in the first case to have a second uh, uh, to see if they could, if he could be uh, uh, found not guilty or, or in the first case too because of errors that were made uh, in the in the case he was found guilty. I was up there for the verdict in the second case, and I had met Hernandez. Uh, the, he he was a, a, a very nice person, as far as I could see. He was very helpful uh, in the times I met him uh, in the in the courtroom. Actually, uh, when he was found dead in his cell, hanging. Immediately after, you know, within a couple of days after being found not guilty, there was a big concern that uh, by the family and that and 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 um, um, uh, the lawyers uh, that uh, he was hanged. That it was a homicide and, and not a, a suicide. So uh, I was asked by Baez the to do a second autopsy. Um, and as part of the sec to see whether or not there was any evidence uh, that this was uh, that he was uh, 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 strangled and then hung up uh, to make it look like a suicide. And in my findings, it w- were consistent with uh, a suicide, but uh, I was concerned about uh, the reason why and told Baez that we that this the brain should be studied uh, for CTE uh, uh, and now and, and the um, the doctors who do the study the pathologists who do the study are in Boston they're also in Boston so doc, uh, Jose Baez uh, um then was able to get uh, the uh, uh, over opposition uh, from from uh, some opposition was to, uh, to have the brain transferred from the autopsy 
to the um, um, a group studying CTE, and they found he had tremendous CTE uh, in his in his brain. Uh, and then the issue comes up, as you raised, did this contribute to his committing suicide? Because uh, the rest of the findings, and my findings were that it was consistent with a self-inflicted suicide, uh, and not homicide, more consistent with suicide than homicide, uh, but that the cause of it may have been the, um, the, the CTE, and that's a real problem because there's a high incidence of suicide in football players who have the uh, this kind of brain damage due to caused by uh, uh, repeated blows to the head, blows that may not cause death or subdural hemorrhages or da outer damage to the brain, but cause severe damage over time. His damage was very severe for his young age and could very well have been contributed to. Uh, uh, the reason that he committed suicide because of his uh, uh, damaged brain from uh, uh, his football playing. Got you. Yeah, it, 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 I remember that case very well. And uh, the fact that he, in, if memory serves me correct, his, um, he was found not guilty. He, in you the know, second trial, found not in guilty. In the second trial. And, and days later, when most people would think that he is on a high um, and, and he's now going to challenge the first trial um, with an appeal, he turns up dead in his cell. So, wow. Okay, another case that you were involved in that, you know, and you were involved in so many. I mean, we can go on for days but this one was uh, another very high-profile, controversial case. Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein, another one, found dead in his cell, allegedly due to hanging. Who reached out to you from the Epstein camp, and what were your findings in that case? Well, I, I got a call um, for actually from uh, the brother, uh, the— uh, 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 of Jeffrey Epstein um, and from a lawyer. The lawyer was really a lawyer for the estate. The, the lawyer for the state called uh, and um, they were concerned that uh, he didn't commit suicide, that, uh, that he, uh, they already knew uh, that there was some, uh, they, 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 they felt that he was in good, good uh, mental condition, that he uh, was, um, his lawyers were trying to get him out on probation, uh, out uh, a pending trial, the trial and all, and um, uh, asked me to come down and do it w within a day, two days. Uh, with, they called me, excuse me, uh, Sean, they called me immediately. I was up, uh, it was COVID time. I was up uh, in a place uh, that we had in uh, the Catskill Mountains uh, to hide from COVID. And um, uh, I came down and was there, was asked by the family, agreed to by the medical examiner, to be there while the autopsy was done. See, before the autopsy was done. Uh, so I was there uh, uh Consulting, uh, uh, watching, and uh, the, the autopsy, uh, making requests of things to be done uh, if necessary uh, as part of the autopsy. I didn't do the autopsy, but I was there for the autopsy. During the course of the autopsy, it became apparent that there was a ligature mark around his neck from where he supposedly was, died of hanging, and that there were multiple fractures of the bones underneath it. The windpipe was fractured uh, in three places. It was more of a crush injury than a hanging injury. And um, that there were hemorrhages in the eyes, uh, that this was more of a strangulation case, manual strangulation case, than or a ligature strangulation uh, by somebody else, not by hanging in a cell. Because in hanging, there are there aren't that 
many fractures. The hanging, the the bone, the uh, ligature comes up under the mandible, under the jawbone, which is above the ligature, uh, above the uh, uh, Adam's apple. Uh, the ligature is higher than the Adam's apple, so he had three, two fractures of the Adam's apple, and uh, a fracture of the bone right above the Adam's apple with the hyoid bone. That the uh, the lig the mark on the neck didn't match the sheet uh, ligature that was present in the um, in the cell, the photograph of the, and that this was uh, uh, more typical of a homicidal strangulation than of a suicide. Uh, and this is right at the time. This wasn't an exhumation. This wasn't a second autopsy. This was just what the first autopsy was. What happened was the doctor did the first autopsy, did a very nice autopsy, and also was concerned about uh, whether it's a homicide or suicide, was considering it, and, and left the initial death certificate was the undetermined pending further study. But the chief medical examiner at the time, a few days later, changed it to homicide. And uh, and then uh, there was a lot of information came out, out that he was uh, – uh, that uh, the, uh, the correction officers who were supposed to check the cell, his cell, every 15 minutes or half hour didn't do that for, ten, for about eight or ten hours. Uh, and uh, nobody looked into the cell or, or on the um, uh, uh, the site where the cell was, and that the uh, the video was uh, didn't work, and there was a lot of other things came up to uh, also raise the issue of whether somebody else did the uh, strangulation. But uh, my opinion is still that it's more likely um, uh, a homicide than a suicide. You know, it's very interesting that um, in such a high-profile case that America's talking about, uh, there's no video. You know, you would think that a video camera would be directly pointed to that cell for this specific reason. Who went in, who who came out. I, I, you know, I got to believe he was on possibly a suicide watch so to not have any video is very, very strange, number one. Sean, may uh, just interrupt for the thing? Yeah, he was on suicide watch. Uh, he had another person in the cell with him who was taken out the day before. Uh, and there were video cameras in his cell. There was a video camera pointed to his cell and one on the tier. Both of those videos weren't working at the time. They were there, but for whatever reason, uh, they weren't working and didn't capture anything. And the door, yeah. and he wasn't checked for about more than eight hours, for uh, uh, as I recall. Yeah, very, very um, suspicious to say the least. It was a convenient. It, it, it was a convenient death for a lot of people. Yeah, I got to ask you something because we spoke about uh, Aaron Hernandez and Jeff Epstein, both of which died of um, hanging, if you will. Are there any consistencies in terms of hanging? Because you you made clear that yes, I believe Aaron Hernandez did die. His his injuries were consistent with hanging. On the other hand, Jeffrey Epstein, no, this is more homicide. What are you looking for? Is is is, is the eyes, are the capillaries in the eyes bursting? Is there uh, blood that rushes? Down to the feet. What, what are you looking for that tells you this was or was not a suicide? Well, uh, specifically, uh, the, the amount of damage to the neck, first of all, uh, is, is most important in evaluating the question of suicide versus homicide with an, uh, compression, necks, uh, with strangulation. Both of them die of strangulation. Suicide strangulation, the person is... The ligature is around the neck. The, the head weighs about 10 pounds. Uh, so if a person is, uh, say, a 180-pound person, if you're hanging uh, uh, with your feet off the ground in a normal hanging, there's 180 pounds less 
10 is 170 pounds of pressure around the neck, the upper neck above the windpipe. That compresses all the blood vessels uh, so that there's no blood going to the brain. And because there's no blood growing to the uh, vein, the person will pass out in less than 10 seconds with a, the normal hanging, no compression of the, uh, of the skin. There's a, a ligature mark on the skin, but no hemorrhage underneath it. It's all compression underneath. No fractures. So occasionally there'll be a fracture, one fracture, uh, depending on how wide the ligature is. In a homicide, there are multiple fractures of the windpipe, and there are uh, petechial hemorrhages, a little uh, in the in the eyes, in the whites of the eye, little hemorrhages of capillaries, because when one uh, is compressing the neck, say with a th hand, you know, and, and manual strangulation, for example, the um, the um, uh, veins, the veins of the, ne of the neck are collapsed, but not the arteries. The arteries can still pump blood because there's not enough pressure on them. So they're pumping blood up to the brain and to the eyes, and it can't get back into the heart because the veins are collapsed. So the capillaries in the eyes start to pop and give the little p petechial hemorrhages. In a, a, in a normal hanging, in a normal hanging, because all arteries and veins are collapsed by the weight of the body, uh, there's no blood flow to the brain at all, and no blood flow. So the, there's no particular hemorrhages. You don't get the little hemorrhages in the eyes, uh, which is a, a difference between hanging. Now that's when their feet are off the ground. If the feet are on the ground so that part of the weight of the body is on the feet, then the uh, compression pressure is not, a, is not the, f the full weight of the body, but partial weight. So sometimes you can get a little uh, hemorrhage, a little blood going to the brain, you can get a little bit of particular hemorrhages. Uh, in this situation, uh, the guards, the two guards who found him refused to say what condition he was in. They were initially arrested and charged. Remember, the problem with, the, with the, in part with the death of Jeffrey Epstein is he was in a federal prison. So he was not in New York City uh, 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 jurisdiction. He's in a federal prison. And that the FBI did all the investigation into the prison. The New York City people didn't. New York City police didn't, who have much more, uh, uh, much more um, uh, uh, um, familiarity and experience with homicides and with uh, suicidal deaths in prison than than the uh, federal government, and the uh, the guards uh, who are federal were taken into custody and charged uh, because they they had made false entries about what is about seeing Epstein. Uh, they said they saw him every half hour or, or I think or every 15 minutes uh, for the eight hours he was there. That was not true. Nobody saw what was happening for those uh, two shifts. It was the end of one shift and the start of another shift that they were uh, impro uh, that he wasn't properly observed. They, they initially arrested and then they made a deal with them somehow uh, he, they never came to trial, the two witnesses, the two guards, to say how they found him. Did they find him hanging? We don't know that, whether they found him hanging. All they know is they came in, they realized they were in trouble. The body was, take, the body was taken to the infirmary, apparently. Uh, nobody saw the scene except there, were, there was a ligature on the ground. My view of the ligature on the, gro on the, uh, on the ground uh, from the sheet from the photographs that were taken, doesn't match the ligature mark around the neck. The imprint around the neck doesn't match the ligature. And the fractures, uh, the multiple fractures would indicate that there was uh, more likely homicide than suicide. But uh, we never, as far as I know, the federal government has not released at all the um, 
the um, uh, uh, what the guard what the uh, guards said. They, I believe, uh, 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 withdrew their uh, their uh, uh, arrest of the, uh, uh, but never released how how Epstein was found. As I said. The autopsy begins at the scene. We don't know how the body is, uh, how Mr. Epstein was when he was found by the guards, whether he was hanging, uh, whether he was on his knees, whether uh, uh, somebody came into the cell because this. we don't know whether his cell door was locked or unlocked from the investigation. And I would say one thing to you, uh, Sean, because of my experience with Attica, uh, that uh, with the Attica um, autopsies and all, the uh, the reason for the uh, Attica in great measure was because uh, the inmates at the time were concerned that they people were dying who were not pr- properly taken care of medically or who were beaten up by guards, and it was all the deaths were covered up by death certificates that said heart disease that. Uh, and that was what. So after after Attica, Governor uh, Rockefeller set up a special board to look into all deaths in prisons, uh, uh, prisons, jails, and lockups throughout New York State. New York State Commission Medical Review Board. Five members were appointed to investigate every death that occurs in the in the prison system, uh, including. Uh, a, a forensic pathologist. I was a, a appointed by the governor to be that per, forensic pathologist. And during the past year since Attica, every death that, that occurs in the prison, jails, and lockups in New York State are investigated by that board. And if he had, uh, if Epstein had died in a New York City prison, I would have reviewed that case officially. Uh, he wasn't. That was a federal prison. And over the course of the pair, more than 50 years of that board, I've been reappointed to that board uh, by eight different governors. And we've investigated uh, hundreds of uh, of, uh, hanging deaths and uh, is one of the more common ways that people die in prison. And uh, none of them have the kind of marks that uh, Jeffrey Epstein has around the neck and the kind of fractures that he has. Very, very insightful. Very insightful. Uh, You know, many people do believe exactly what you said, that he was murdered. It was not a suicide. Um, Very insightful information. Thank you so much for for sharing that um, insight.